Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we've been doing trade videos. We just did uh, Hollabuck. <clears throat> that was fun. Oh, there was much frolic in the land when we did that one. We had, uh, and we, I hadn't did one for quite a while before that, but we did do Demko a little while ago. And uh, we, we, when the trade deadline was going on, we had to Foley. We had a whole, we've done tons. Go check them out. They're lots of fun. But today, we're going to do something a little different. We're not going to be looking at trades. We're going to look at free agency. And I want to look at one specific player in free agency that I find fascinating. Um, as he could go to a lot of different places. He really hasn't tipped his hand as to any particular spot he's looking at. And that is Todd, Ber or sorry, that is Tyler Bertuzzi. Todd, that's his uncle. <laughs> Tyler Bertuzzi um, plays now with the Boston Bruins, uh, was traded there by Detroit. When it became clear that Stevie Eisenman wasn't going to be able to get a deal done. And here's the thing. And this is what makes him interesting. And you can comment in the comment section and tell me what you think. But from what I understand, he was looking between seven and eight million dollars a year on a long term deal. I think that's a little steep, and I'm not sure he's going to get that on the market. Um, I think at best he might get a six. So we'll look at some teams, though, that are going to be interested in Pachuzzi. We're going to look at his body of work, his age, uh, what he's done in to up to this point in his career. And uh, then we're going to look at seven teams that will be interested, I believe, in Bertuzzi. And you may have more. You may know more that you might want to throw out there. But I quickly did this. Um, like I said, this is one take. I don't do any editing or anything like that. I just put a bunch of teams up there, go through uh, using the knowledge I have of all the players in the league and teams. I watch a divorce-worthy amount of hockey. Crazy. I'm also a, pro a very successful professional handicapper. So if you like making money and uh, putting little bets on games, check bpowpicks.com. We're at 420 units this year alone. And we don't just do hockey. We do basketball, football, everything. Baseball. There's a bunch of us that do it. I do the hockey part. So with all that in mind, let's look at Mr. Tyler Bertuzzi. Oh, why do I have it on Calgary? There you go. Tyler Bertuzzi, 28 years old. He's from Sudbury, Ontario. Uh, he uh, He's the, I believe he is the nephew of Todd Bertuzzi. Plays a pretty darn rugged style. He was drafted by the Pittsburgh Penguins, or the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Detroit Red Wings in the second round. Uh, as you can see, 6'1", 199 pounds, fairly big boy, plays like a big guy. He, he plays like a bat out of hell. Uh, a lot of people love him for his grittiness and his way, his uh, anger in the game. The, he plays with an edge, no doubt about that, and uh, has fun doing it. He relishes in it. Uh, Salary-wise, right now, he is at 4.7, uh, his AAV is 4.7. That's what his previous contract is. And um, as points-wise, he's had some injury issues. In fact, he had some injury issues this year and only had 14 points in 29 games, then went over to, to Boston, and then it's 16 points in 21 games, playing a little lower in the lineup. Uh, now his the in 2021-22 he was almost a point a game, 30 goal score. It's the only time he did it, and it's hard to say whether he would be able to replicate it again. I had an idea that he could be a 70 point winger somewhere around there, and if that's the case, I mean, you can make an argument that his seven million ask isn't too far off base. But the fact of the matter is, he only. He's 28 years old, and he's only come close to a point a game once. So, 
I think it's going to be a hard sell to get that kind of money out of general managers. Good for him to try to get as much money as he can, but uh, I wouldn't blame him. I'd do the same. But that's what we are looking at for Bertuzzi, a rough and tumble. He can play left wing or right wing, and he does it equally well, and that is really huge. Um, that That is a huge thing for a, for a, a player to be able to do. Uh, most organizations are looking for players like that. Detroit, uh, Stevie Eisenman is huge for that. He wants his wingers to be able to play both sides. But anyways, didn't work out. So let's look at the first team on the list, which is the one that owns his rights. The Boston Bruins. Um, novel idea for the Boston Bruins to want. Uh, I'm sure they're taking a look at this, but there is... They would like to keep Bertuzzi, I'm sure. No doubt about it. But there's this little problem of only having $4 million in cap, $5 million in cap space, just under $5 million in cap space. And they've got a crap load of players to sign. Uh, now, they may not sign all these players. Maybe David Krejci is probably retiring here. David Krejci's probably retiring here. Uh, it sounds like Patrice Bergeron is as well. Uh, they don't have to sign Nick Foligno back. Um, they could take a shot at Garrett Hathaway. But the fact of the matter is, though, even though they don't have to sign any of these players, they have to have a lineup. Um, and they're going to need more than one player. Now, if they go, say, let's say $6 million, Okay, let's say they give... Bertuzzi six million dollars a year now they're two million dollars over the cap he would fit I mean we already know he fit well he played well in Boston when he was there uh, so he would be a guy that could play here with Frederick uh, Trent Frederick who I do believe is going to get a bigger role next year no doubt about that um, but now you're looking at a fourth line of very iffy players uh, Mark McLaughlin Shane Bowers uh, Oscar Steen has come up and played fairly well, but he, at 25, he hasn't been able to really get a grip on, on the lineup, although I think he'll get a much more of a chance next year. And that's basically what your team is going to look like, and you're still going to have to get find a way to shave $2 million off this group. Um, so it's a tough ask. It's possible. It's possible. I think if he really wants to stay in Boston, he would take a little bit less to stay there. Um, but from from what I'm gathering, um, he I can't remember his agent's name, but he, his agent isn't really the type of agent you choose if you plan on taking less. It's usually players with this agent, and I like I said, I should have looked it up what his agent was. I can look it up for you right now while I'm talking about this. Um, usually... They want to get as much money as they possibly can. I wouldn't doubt if Bertuzzi does want to do that here. He, ha he uh, isn't going to get an opportunity like this again, you know, to be 28 years old and a free agent. Uh, his next contract, he'll be probably way too old to really cash in. So, Todd Reynolds is his name. Agent Todd Reynolds. Okay, so I, I put it down here because I'm sure they're going to take a look at trying to uh, accommodate him. They do have Fabian Lizelle who played in the AHL next year. Maybe they give him a shot, but that lineup's looking pretty thin. And I, get, I have a feeling that they'll probably pass, and they'll try to grab a, a couple $3 million, $2 million guys to fill out the bottom of that roster so they have a little more depth than they do. That's my thinking. What do you think, Boston fans? Do you think they're going to give them a contract? Uh, do you think maybe they try to trade out some players? I've heard Matt Grizzlick's name out there to be traded away uh, to make a little more cap space for them. Um, although I don't know exactly who's going to take the spot. Maybe Mason Laurie. He, he came up and did not too bad. You know, They're going to use some younger players move him, and then sign Bertuzzi if they really, really want him. I'm just not getting the feeling that they need to go out and pay a 28-year-old guy. Things are starting to look towards the rebuild side of Boston. I, 
Uh, my gut says it ain't happening. But tell me what you think, Boston fans. All right, next, Calgary Flames. The main reason why I put the Calgary Flames in here is because it's that this is Bertuzzi is their type of player. It's it's what they want to be like. You know, that's why they have Matthew, Matthew they drafted Matthew Kachuk. Um they want to be like that and and and, and signing Kadri, you know, and like kind of annoying uh annoying on the ice that is players that that play with an edge and uh, grind it out. This is what Calgary has built their reputation on. And honestly, they don't really have as much as they would normally do. It, it, it's not, this is not a Calgary team that seems like a Calgary team. So we also have, of course, the first problem. Um, I'm not even gonna go look, I know what they have. It's a million point five or something cap space. So somebody would have to go in this instance. That's why I have them lower on the list because they would have to make a move to make room for a player like Todd Bertuzzi or why did I go a Tyler Bertuzzi? Um, now they could do that. I'm not saying that they wouldn't. Um, I, there was rumbles last year of Noah Hannafin being moved, and they do have, you know, fairly good depth on defense, um, and maybe they want to look that route. So they can have more offensive offensive depth than a guy like this. Another one is Andrew Manjapani. He came, uh, had a great year the year before last. And last year, he kind of left everybody with a, a little bit not too happy. <laughs> the organization, and he was not very happy with his performance last year. He wasn't the same player he was the year before. Now, a lot of people say, well, that could be just Sutter's system. He gets a different coach in there that has a little more offense then he would be able to do that but the problem i have with that is <clears throat> he did that only one year this is manjupani here he is what, 27 years old and has had one 30 goal season much like bertuzzi in the in the situation as well um and he basically just reverted back to his numbers from before. In fact, maybe even a little better than the numbers he was having before. So there's a very good chance that he's somewhere in between, or this is a basically what he is. And if there's a team out there, I mean, Manjapani is a, a, a very fast player. There's a lot of value in having a guy like Manjapani. If you like speed, he's good on the penalty kill. He can do a lot of things for you. And there could be a team out there that'd be willing to give him a shot at, uh, I think it's like $5 million a year that he's making, somewhere around there. 5 8 It might be a little tough. You might have to take a little bit of a player back. But to get a guy like Bertuzzi to go on that line, who, he, like I said, he can play on the right side. Um, or Dubé can play on the right side, and he can play up with Lindholm if they actually keep Lindholm. Stay tuned for that. It's a lot of talk about Lindholm and, you know, think what he might be doing in the future. He wasn't too happy with last year. So I could see it. This just seems like a Calgary play. Anyways, Calgary fans, tell me what you think. Uh, taking Bertuzzi instead of a guy like Manjo Pani, if you can get that all, do, do, work that out somehow, would you be interested in that? Trading one of your players away, maybe a Noah Hannafin. And bringing Bertuzzi in as the defense is pretty strong, even without Noah Hannafin, it'd still be a pretty strong defense there in Calgary. All right, next team, San Jose Sharks. And I almost put Calgary ahead of him, this team. Um, now, I think the first thing people are going to say when I say the San Jose Sharks is they're rebuilding. And I would agree, they are rebuilding. That's why I have them lower. It's possible they don't want to go this direction at all. They're just going to keep on going with what they have and trading away as much as they can and doing a true rebuild. Honestly, I think this is going to be a hybrid rebuild. I just don't see that San Jose market being able to afford to be bad for the next five or six years, like say what Chicago is doing or what Detroit has done before it. It's not a hotbed hockey market, although they have built a pretty solid fan base there. It's not bad, but 
is our fan base going to stick around for five years? What is you? What kind of a fan base are you going to have left at the end of something like that? Um, as far as cap space is concerned, fourteen million dollars in cap space. They have room. They have room. And if he's willing to take the five and a half to six million, I think it's going to be closer to six, six million to go to San Jose and help them kind of charge up this rebuild. Um, then I think. I have a feeling San Jose would be interested in that. Now, you, I, I think a lot of people are saying, well, why would we trade Myers last year if we're going to bring in Bertuzzi this year? Well, one reason is the, why Myers got traded. But we don't know what is going on behind the scenes um, as well. A lot of times they talk to players, and Myers had played his whole career really not having, you know, hadn't won a cup yet. He was getting older, and... It could very well be that he said, you know what, I wouldn't mind moving on a little bit. I think I think I, I don't know if I want to be rebuilt until my mid thirties. And Bertuzzi could say the same here and say, I don't I'm not interested for that reason as well. He has been already on a rebuilding team in Detroit. However, it's a beautiful place to live. Now, I don't know what Bertuzzi's mindset is. And um, they have a couple of really good players coming up, like William Eklund. They're going to have a top pick this year. Um, and he's only 28 years old. So if you know you give him a seven-year deal or whatever, he's going to be 35 years old. If you think he's going to be good enough for the next seven years, if you think you're going to get value out of that contract, by the time they are contenders, say you know three, four years from now, and with a guy like Bertuzzi, it would definitely speed up the process. You got a fantastic player that just about any team would want. And let's face it, they, they need wingers bad here, man. Um, you, even if you get, say, Carlson, this another center, or if you go and take Nietzschekoff for, for, for that matter, um, they're going to need players to play with. And there's not much to play with here. You got Jacob Peterson, Noah Gregor. I mean, this team could be in big, big trouble for a while. I could be wrong. Maybe they're just going to go the rebuild route and uh, just keep it as it is, which would definitely be a rebuild. And they're going to suck for four or five years, pick up number one draft picks, and you know, could even be longer. Could be like all, when you do a rebuild like that. When a team does a rebuild like that, if you see with Detroit. You're talking about seven or eight years before you could be a cup contender. So I just I just have a feeling that San Jose is going to grab a couple prospects, especially a guy like Nietzschekoff. Uh, you know, for like two or three years, they're going to stockpile, and then they're going to add. And I think Bertuzzi could be part of that add. Tell me what you think, San Jose fans. What would you think of a guy like Bertuzzi? 6'1", big dude, plays hard. San Jose really, I mean, Logan Couture when he was a little younger and a winger, Bertuzzi. But they don't really have anybody in their lineup like that here. They don't have anybody in their lineup much that's going to protect um, these new guys coming up. And Bertuzzi will do that. He'll drop them, man. He'll drop them. And he knows how to take numbers. And he knows how to make people feel pain for doing stupid shit to your younger players. So I could see it. Tell me what you think, San Jose fans. All right, next, Colorado Avalanche. And uh, we're getting up here on the list now. I'm putting, I think Colorado, is gonna, Colorado this year is going to be in on a lot of different players, especially with it looks like their captain, Landis Gog, is not going to be back for who knows how long. Um, it does give them cap relief. Of course, it would be way better if they actually had Landis Gog. But since they don't, why not look at a guy like Bertuzzi to play that wing spot that plays a lot like Landis Gog. He's not as good defensively as Landis Gog was. He's not going to bring that high-level leadership of Landis Gog. But he is a guy that's going to go out there and play freaking hard, hit people, wear down the opposition, and he's going to protect younger players. And I think... From what I saw with Colorado last year, uh, when they were not uh, even in the playoffs, they could use somebody like that. 
Um, they've got a lot of great players. Valerie, Valerie Nachushkin's a big dude, but he's not a guy that goes out and bangs heads, like in the sense of uh, a protection type player. It's not really in his personality. And there's not really, you have Curtis McDermott, but he shouldn't even really be in the lineup, to tell you the honest truth. He's not that great of a player. Bertuzzi can play. So you could put him up there either with McKinnon uh, and, you know, Lekkonen down there with Newhook and Nuchushkin, and you got, salt, you got your top six right off the bat at $6 million a year. I didn't really uh, – I wanted to look at the cap space. Yeah, $13 million, You got cap space. Now, I think they – uh, Colorado's got a, a lot of positions they have to fill here as well. So that $13 million is going to get eaten up this year, no doubt about that. And they may decide to do the same thing they did last year and just add a bunch of $2 million players. But we saw how that worked last year. <laughs> you know? So um, yeah, I don't think you want Logan O'Connor in the top six. So taking a guy like Bertuzzi, you still got seven or eight million dollars a year to fill out the bottom part of your roster, and you still got a solid roster. So there's how many there's uh, the the free agent class out there. I think Colorado Avalanche fans are going to be saying we need center, we need center. I agree, you do, but there's not much for centers out there besides O'Reilly. And if you are if you don't win the race to get our O'Reilly. I'm not sure he's going to want to pay for O'Reilly there, Joe Sackick, because he doesn't like to give older players long contracts, as we've seen with Kadri. And O'Reilly is even older than Kadri was. Maybe you're going to have to fill out that center spot as you go, but you're definitely going to need to fill out that wing spot. And I think Tyler Bertuzzi would, you could do a lot worse than Tyler Bertuzzi to do it, that's for sure. Honestly, I'm not sure there's much out there that um, would give you the same value as Bertuzzi. There are a couple trades that we're going to be looking at, and I already mentioned it. Um, and I'm pretty sure Colorado will be on the list because Calgary is talking about possibly moving a guy like Lindholm. So, yeah, if they can find a way to get that center, maybe they don't look at Bertuzzi right now. Maybe they grab their winger later. But if they can't, I think Bertuzzi would be a great fit for Colorado. Tell me what you think, Colorado Avalanche fans. Tyler Bertuzzi to Colorado. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube and comment down there and let me know what you think. Okay. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Yes, that's right. Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, first thing we know right off the bat, they have no cap space. And there's tons of holes that have to be filled on this roster no doubt about it they have nine million that's not bad but i mean look at look at all the players they have to sign here you got reese um you, you might want to give bunting a contract uh kerfoot ryan o'reilly is he going to be coming back i personally don't think so um so there's a lot of a lot of shoes to fill here I am not doing, I'm not giving this out there as a trade that happens without another move. There has been, uh, you know, well, there's always a lot of talk in Toronto, of course, but there has been talk of somebody like William Nylander being moved on. And this is what I would think would happen here if it was for, if, if Toronto was going to do something like this. I think Nylander would be moved. They bring in some good, solid bottom six guys, good draft picks, uh, some cheaper young players with Nylander and, uh, to fill out this roster and give themselves a lot of depth. And then you bring in a guy like Bertuzzi. Now, I have a lot of Toronto Maple Leaf friends that are fans. For, yeah, that are Toronto Maple Leaf fans that are friends or whatever you want to say. And I see it as well. A lot of people see it as they don't have enough grit on this freaking team and they brought in O'Reilly to give it a shot but it wasn't enough a guy they don't have anybody that plays like Tyler Bertuzzi that can score Sam Lafferty you can make a case that he plays a lot like that but I'm talking about a guy that can truly play and Bertuzzi can truly play 30 goal scorer once almost a point a game He's probably going to be looking in the $6 million range. But here's the thing, and this is another reason why I put Toronto in here. He's from Sudbury, Ontario. 
He's from Toronto. If it's possible, you could get him to shave off a little bit of what his market value would be to play in Toronto. I don't know, Tyler. Maybe he doesn't even want to play in Toronto. I don't know. Uh, hometown team. Not all guy. Not everybody likes to play for the hometown team. But most hockey players that are from Toronto dream of playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs since they're kids. It's like it's their dream. So if you can get lucky enough that he is one of those players, you just might be able to get him to come in at five and a bit or something like that. So if you're liking that, do you like that number on Bertuzzi? Would you rather have a guy like Bertuzzi than Nylander? I mean, Nylander offensively is far better than Bertuzzi, right? I We know that. Um, there's no doubt about that. But they have a lot of offense as it is right now. And um, you put Marner and Matthews and, and you know, the, the cap room has been spread thin. Nylander's going to need a contract after next year. And where are they going to – Nylander's going to get something like nine to ten million dollars at least i don't think they're i think it's very likely that they won't be able to keep them and you bring in a guy like bertuzzi and you can bring others to add depth to this team and not to mention what you get back in the Nylander trade that's the way i like to look at it and i'll probably be doing a Nylander trade video coming up any soon so be watching out for that um tell me what you think subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, let me know in the comment section. I love to talk hockey and I love to talk trades. All right, next. The St. Louis Blues. We're getting up to now where it's more and more plausible that something like this could happen. St. Louis, uh, like we know, traded O'Reilly last year. They're also an organization that isn't big on signing veterans to long-term deals they didn't sign their captain in peter angelo and they didn't sign their captain in o'reilly because they were old and they're terribly afraid of giving veterans long contracts now bertuzzi's 28 he's not that old uh he's not in his 30s yet it's more like they won't give him when they're over 30 years old or close to 30 years or 30 years old so like for instance when they signed krug I believe he was right around 29, 28 years old, same as Falk. Um, they don't mind that 28 spot, somewhere around there, so up until you're 35. But they don't like to sign people long-term past that, especially at a high number. So I, now we bring in Tyler Bertuzzi into this lineup. This is another thing I see with St. Louis. When they made that O'Reilly trade, they went out and got – a uh, Jacob Verana, a great deal, fantastic. Brought back, um, got back Sammy Blay from the New York Rangers in the, uh, uh, who did they trade to the Rangers? Oh, yeah, Tarasenko deal. Uh, they have Brandon Saad, Thomas Cairo, um, and then they got went out and got Kasperi Kapanen from Pittsburgh. They threw a lot of darts on the board, and what they seem to be building here is something like you see in Seattle, but maybe even with more offense than Seattle has. And that is, it looks like they're going for a top, a, a deep four-line team with no real superstars, but depth and scoring in uh, from every line. It seems to be something that's working in the NHL right now. No doubt about it. Uh, Vegas is built that way. Although you could make a case that Stone possibly is a superstar close to it. Um, Florida is built that way. Again, I, I think Kachuk is a superstar. A lot of people would disagree with me, but um, they're deep. They're very deep. They're not full of superstars, that's for sure. You know, you could make a case that Barkov is as well. But they're on good contracts and they're deep all the way through the lineup. And I think St. Louis is doing something similar here. That's the direction I think they've decided to go based on how the pieces they've put together already. And somebody like Bertuzzi, I think, would fit really well in that type of, of, uh, of team building. No doubt about it. They've got $7 million in cap space as it stands right now. This would be all the money. But the good thing about it with St. Louis is if they were to do that, 
if they were to grab Bertuzzi, they wouldn't need to do much else. Um, I personally think they need, they need to work on their defense, but I also think it's going to be pretty difficult to do that because their defense is this defense, and that's that's pretty much it. I don't. You'd have to trade one of Krug or Falk, or you know somehow trade Pareko and then add that way. Anyways, and maybe they decide to do that rather than going for a forward piece like this. Could make sense. Um, I do believe they, they have no trade clauses in their contracts. Yeah, see, full no trades on Falk and uh, Krug. I think Pareko does as well. I don't think anybody's taking Letty at that price at that price point now at his age. So I think they're kind of got to go with this defense as it is. And if that's the case, best to have a super deep forward group that you can roll four lines and they can help the defense out a lot. And Bertuzzi comes in and does that in spades. And here's the other thing. They don't really have a guy like Bertuzzi in their lineup. Jake Neighbors is getting there, but I don't think he's got the offense of Bertuzzi. Jake Neighbors is looking more like a fourth liner, a really, really, really good fourth liner. Can, can play on the third line, but more of a really good fourth liner. So you could slot Bertuzzi at 5 to $6 million a year. It's probably going to be closer to six with Shen and Verana. And then you've got Blay Butchnevich Kapanen, Saad Thomas Kyrou. That is an incredibly deep top three. And... You bring in a guy like Bertuzzi who can grind it out with anybody, uh, wear down the opposition. He brings intensity. He brings work ethic. Um, he gets the opposition off their game. He's fantastic that way. And I don't think St. Louis really has anybody like that right now. And I think it's important to have somebody like that. Um, so I think St. Louis would take a pretty good look here. That might be the only move they make. Uh, do What other players do they have to sign? Yeah, you got, like, not really, not really much to sign here. Um, Topchenko, he's going to take league minimum. Logan Brown, if you want to keep him around, I mean, if you want to qualify him or not. Uh, and uh, Josh Levo, Tyler Pitt, like, like these guys can be had at league minimum and you can move pieces around to make them fit. It's not that difficult to do. So I liked Bertuzzi going to St. Louis. St. Louis fans, tell me what you think down there in the comment section. I know one thing a lot of people are going to be saying here is he has had injury issues in the past. And he has. It is a little bit of a risk that way. But when you look what's available out there, honestly, He's one of the better pieces you could find. Comment in the comment section. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of that, boys and girls, St. Louis Blues fans. Okay, next. Nashville Predators. Um, uh, I think the first thing Nashville Predators fans are going to say is, no, we're rebuilding. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't buy a full rebuild in Nashville. The fans have already stopped showing up one year. One, and they almost made the playoffs and, and, and it was starting to get empty in the building. This is a fan base that is building but isn't there yet. And I just don't see this team ever going into a complete knock it down, tear it down rebuild. I just don't see it. Um, also, Nashville has been, you know, Nashville has had some difficulty drawing free agents. You, you get the occasional one like Ryan McDonough that was very happy to be there. Um, but I think bringing in Barry Trotz may change that as the, as the general manager, and it would depend on the coach. However, you already got Philip Tomasino, who's got a lot of upside. Luke Evangelista looked fantastic. You got, you got the draft pick that's coming in here, uh, coming in soon. You can't do anything with uh, Johansson and Matt Duchesne contract, so you're not really ever going to totally rebuild anyways, because I don't think you're doing anything. Like that. I don't think they have the po deep pockets enough to, to buy those contracts out and do a lot of things that these bigger markets can do. So I think they have to basically be in a constant retool. They're bringing young players in, 
And if you got a chance to bring in a guy like Bertuzzi that plays like a bat out of hell, brings you a ton of energy. Fans would fans love him. Fans absolutely love him. When you watch Tyler Bertuzzi play, man, like he brings people to he bring he's a favorite of the fans. Everywhere he goes. He was a favorite in Detroit. Um, Boston loved him right away. And and you need guys like that on your team that's willing to do what Bertuzzi does. And here's the thing. One of the things he does is he protects guys like Tomazino, uh, Evangelista, and whomever else might be coming up. Parsonen, who's been who got a good chance last year and looked pretty good. Thomas Nova, Novak looked fantastic last year. These guys need somebody to protect them too, you know. And Bertuzzi does that sort of thing. He gives you, and he's only 28 years old. So even if it is sort of a rebuild, he, you know, three, four years is a max. I could see them doing a rebuild here or missing the playoffs for. It's just going to hurt in the pocketbook way too much. I don't see any owner in that market seeing the seeing the gates not fill up for three or four years. I just can't see it. So he would fit in fantastic here. I would love to see him playing with a guy like Thomas Novak. And he could play. He's had a, almost a point a game and a 30-goal season in his career. I think he can do it again. He's probably looking at about $6 million a year. You grab him. And here's the thing. Um, maybe you give him a little more money, but kind of hopefully be able to, not have the trade protection so much so somewhere down the road if it's not working out you can still get value of them i'd rather pay him a little more money and not have the trade protection uh so not what i mean by that is a full trade you got 15 million in cap space if you sign him to a six the full six million you know give him that extra maybe even six and a bit give him that extra half a mil he just might come over and then you have the rest of that cap space to, to do whatever you want to fill out your roster. Um, like I said, he draws people to the stands, draws people to the seats. He fills the building. He's that type of player that everybody loves. Tell me what you think, Nashville Predators fans. How would you like a Tyler Bertuzzi? I hope I didn't say Todd in this video too often. Uh, how would you like a Tyler Bertuzzi? Subscribe to my cha YouTube channel. And let me know in the comment section. All right, next. Pittsburgh. Yeah, buddy. I love this play for the Pittsburgh Penguins. This just... Um, this, we all know that it probably should be rebuilding. Crosby's 35, Malkin's 36, but guess what? They're not. You don't give Malkin the contract they gave him at six million dollars till 2026 if you have any plans of actually rebuilding this roster. I, I don't see it happening. They can talk about it all they want. They can pretend like they're kind of doing it, but they ain't doing it. It's simply they aren't doing it. They will grab young guys though, like Bertuzzi. They have plenty of cap space, but a lot of holes to fill in this lineup. And Bertuzzi could be one of them. I think Bertuzzi is would be up on up high on their list, and here's why. You look at this lineup. You have Gunsel, Lullum, Crosby. You know, Rust is a kind of grindy dude, but he's not that big. Um, you know, brought Michael Granlin over. He he's got some grit to his game, and Richard Raquel is 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 solid. It's not a bad top six. But of those guys that can play, who's going to do what Bertuzzi does? Who's going to bring that fire, man? I know Crosby will, but who's going to bring that fire? Who's going to be the... One of the things I think has been missing from the Pittsburgh Penguins this last little while is their top players get beat up quite a bit, and they ain't no, there ain't nobody that's willing to do anything about it here. Nobody. There's nobody that's going to protect this team. And sometimes last year when I was watching Pittsburgh, the fire just didn't seem to be there. The, and that comes with a lot of the times that we call energy players. And Bertuzzi is sure that. But the thing is, he's an energy player that can play in your top six. He could pot 30 goals. He's done it once. I'm sure he, I, I think he can do it again. As long as he can stay healthy. 
I think he would be a incredible fit alongside Malkin. When Malkin doesn't have that, you you know you know as well as I do. Malkin sometimes doesn't look like he's got that fire in him every night. You know, um, when he does, he's fantastic. When he doesn't, you can go a whole game and not even realize Malkin's out there. That having a guy like Bertuzzi on your line makes it very difficult for you to go through that funk. He just seems to bring everybody up. He stirs the pot. He gets the war. He goes to war, Bertuzzi. When's the last, I, um, Pittsburgh used to be a team that, was, that could go to war, and I didn't see that this year. At five, at six million, somewhere around there, maybe if you can get it at 5.7, I, I think he's asking seven. I just, I think that's a, a pipe dream. I don't think he's going to get it. Would it not be freaking awesome to have Bertuzzi, Malkin, Raquel on this lineup? And then you've got, you bring, you bring Gramlin down. Carter, let's face it, Carter has to retire, I would have to say. He's got one more year in his contract, but he should retire. Hopefully. That would be best for you, and you could, you know, still have room to fill out the bottom of the roster here, and maybe, hopefully, get some defense because their defense is poopy. Um, but you have room to get defense, and then you've got a guy like this. I, I just feel like Bertuzzi or a guy like Bertuzzi is something Pittsburgh has been missing for a while, back in the Rick Tockett days. Remember that? Woo! I used to love those Pittsburgh teams. All right, subscribe to my channel, boys and girls, YouTube channel. If you're on Facebook right now, you're going to have to go to YouTube and search Perlo Wisdom, NHL, Perlo's NHL Pearls of Wisdom, and uh, tell me what you think about that. All right, finally, the Montreal Canadiens. You heard me. The Montreal Canadiens, they have cap room was $9 million in cap space. But they have a lot of players that they don't have to sign or it's not going to cost much to sign. If they want to bring Guriana back, that's fine. Pizzetta is not going to break the bank. Uh, and they're certainly not bringing back Dur Duran or, you know, they, they could bring back any of these guys uh, at a very low rate. There's no big person that they have to sign. Now, we all know that it's very likely that Dubois is coming to Montreal. And... You know, it's like one of the worst kept secrets out there. Um, it's possible that Dubois is just using that as a way to make more money in Winnipeg, but I get the feeling it's likely going to happen. So you're going to say, well, if we're going to get Dubois, we can't, we can't get Bertuzzi. Well, no, you can. Players go back. If you, when I, I do these trade videos, and I just did a Hullabuck, and, and as soon as I do a trade video, people are like, well, we don't have the cap space. Like, they're not going to have to send a player back. It's called a trade. You're going to have to send players back. No doubt about it. And you could do like, I don't know what they're going to ask. Uh, they're not going to have much uh, leverage, Winnipeg, in their asking for a guy like Dubois. So if they do, if you do have to pick him up, you know, it might be like an Armia and Christian or Dvorak plus or whatever to make the money work. And it's almost a dollar for dollar deal. And you bring him over, and you bring Bertuzzi. And you say, well, we're rebuilding. That's another thing. I'll tell you, when, when they hired Gorton out of, uh, from the Rangers, yes, you're rebuilding. But if you've noticed, look at how they're rebuilding. I know Hughes is officially the general manager, but Gorton's the general manager. I don't care what you say. Hughes is the guy who does the contracts more than anything. Gorton is the guy. He did a wonderful job building the Rangers, and the Rangers are doing a wonderful job of destroying everything he did. But we'll get, I don't want to get into that. Uh, what did he do? He traded his first for Kirby Doc, 22 years old. He did this in the, with the Rangers, too. He went out and got young guys that were ready to play soon. So the rebuild doesn't have to be until 2029, you know? Um, and he's doing a hell of a job of it. He's picking up as many players as he possibly can that are young and can play right now. And I don't think that's going to stop. I think he's going to continue going that direction. 
Um, Bertuzzi's not super young. He's 28 years old. But I do believe that they think they're going to be a contender in three years. I believe, that's right, I believe Montreal thinks they're going to be a contender in three years. They, Oh, yeah, Jonathan uh, Kovacevic, also 25-year-old, they went and grabbed. He's a master at this. And he's going to continue building like this, I believe. You got Caulfield, Suzuki, Joss Anderson, uh, fantastic kind of f- forward, uh, great two-way, two-way winger in Josh Anderson. Hoffman will be gone somewhere along the line, whether it's going to be after the free agent season. Or... So you get Bertuzzi to play with Doc. This is now getting to be a big, skilled, grinded out, kick your ass type team with some very good slick players like Caulfield and Suzuki. I I totally could see Bertu- them going after Bertuzzi here. Bertuzzi is also from Guelph, Ontario, so it's, this is fairly close to home. Um, I could see him seeing value in uh, going to a place like Montreal. And I just feel that Gorton would, do, would make a move like this. I do. I think this is how he's going to build his team. He's going to look for youngest free, young, youngish free agents as he keeps on drafting, 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 drafting. And then as he builds these guys up and these young guys come up, you're going to have a superpower team. It's what he was doing with the Rangers before they stupidly fired him. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do here. So Montreal fans, what do you think? The guy's a 30-goal scorer. He's a kick-your-ass, beat fucked out of everybody type player. Uh, They're hard to find. It's hard to find power forwards like Bertuzzi. Very hard to find. If you can get him, you get him. That's the way I see it personally. And I think that's the way Gorton sees it. Um, He can play right or left. So Brennan Gallagher is getting up there. He's had injury problems. He can play that right side with Doc. As Yuri Slavoskovsky gets uh, his feet wet, he moves up the lineup. And man, oh man, this is starting to look like a team that can do some damage in like two to three years, maybe even sooner. It, it's going to be fun to watch in Montreal. And a guy like Bertuzzi, I believe, is something that you need in the playoffs, big time. Those are the guys, those kind of guys that go to war every game. When the systems break down and the legs get tired and you're getting to the end of the grind, Guys like Bertuzzi are the ones that usually come through. All right, Montreal fans, comment in the comments section. Let me know what you think about acquiring a a player such as Bertuzzi right now. Uh, Subscribe to my channel. Just search Perlos NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And I will talk to you there, my friends. All right, that's my full 42. That's all I have to give. Like usual, I went long, but... I have so much fun doing this. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Uh, like I said, subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing another one. I uh, Tell me in the comment section what you think. I'm thinking like Lindholm Nylander is my next trade video. Uh, maybe I'm going to do for another free agent one. There's a whole bunch of free agents there. I might go down the free agent road for the, for the next one. May, tell me what you want down there. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.